Okay, so if you are on testosterone, this is an issue you may run into. And if you're watching this video, you may have been told by your provider to watch it because you have that issue. So the issue is an elevated hematocrit. So we're gonna go over what is a hematocrit, what are the values we look for, the numbers and whatnot, uh, why do we care about it, um, what can we do about it whenever it goes too high. Uh, so anyway, jumping in. So hematocrit essentially is a measure of how thick your blood is. So what it's measuring is how many red blood cells versus liquid is in your blood. So if we say, that you have a hematocrit of 48, let's say. So you have a hematocrit of 48. Approximately 48% 48 of your blood is made up of red blood cells. Pretty easy, right? So what is it about it that makes us care about this? So as you can probably imagine, for pretty obvious reasons, if your blood gets too thick, bad things could happen. It can't really flow as well through the blood vessels. And so the major things that we're worrying about are strokes and blood clots. So we definitely don't want those. There are a few other things that can be caused whenever you are having a, an elevated hematocrit, whenever it gets up to a certain point. Um, not everyone experiences these and not everyone would experience all of them necessarily. Um, but things such as um, headache, lightheadedness, elevated blood pressure, uh, a feeling of just being just blah, just tired all the time, or out of breath for no reason. Uh, you may see that your face is always flushed for absolutely no purpose. You just, you know, and it didn't used to be that way because, you know, some people always have a flushed face. But let's say that, you know, over the past few months or past year or so, you've noticed that you just always have this hot face. It's always flushing or you're all the time sweating and hot for absolutely no reason that you can discern. Now that's got to be differentiated between the extra temperature <laughs> that, that testosterone provides. Whenever you get on testosterone, it does tend to make you feel hot and sometimes flush and everything. But this would be, you know, you're going along with your normal uh, hotness <laughs> and suddenly something's changed and it's more intense or more frequent or something like that. Uh, so all of those things are something that can be experienced whenever your hematocrit starts creeping up too high. Not necessarily everyone will experience every single one of them. Uh, and it doesn't mean that you will have a stroke or that you will have a clot. This isn't an emergency situation, but it also is not something that you want to just sit on and do nothing about for a year or something. I mean, we all know that, you know, things go wrong, our body's check engine light comes on and we kind of ignore it and hope it'll go away. Um, this is not one of those things to do that with. Uh, in most cases, it's probably gonna get worse or if it stays the same, that's still not great for your body's internal environment. Um, so anyway, what are the values that we typically look for on a hematocrit uh, on labs? So in general, for cisgender men or transmasculine uh, folks, we're gonna be looking to keep that hematocrit at 51 or lower. Um, when it hits 52, that's our ding, ding, ding. You know, we need to start looking into options of what to do about this. Um, when it goes over 54, that's you absolutely have to go out and get something done about it, like within, a couple of weeks like you need to do something at that point like it that's that's creeping up you know 54 percent or more of your blood is solid stuff red cells not a good look um but anyway so that's we like it 51 or lower um when you hit 52 we start talking about here's some options and things to do if it goes over 54 we're no longer talking we're telling you you need to you need to hop on it and do something um, so what are the options whenever your hematocrit is elevated? So the very first thing we're going to look at is what have your testosterone levels been? If your testosterone levels on labs are insanely high, then that could be part of the problem. See, one thing to keep in mind here is that 
testosterone is one of the things, one of the many things in the body that drives red blood cell production. And that's why this is more of a problem for cisgender guys and transmasculine people, uh, you know, because obviously they're going to have more testosterone on board than anyone who is of a feminine persuasion. So with testosterone comes increased red cell production. Now everyone's going to experience it to some degree, but not everybody's going to get it to such a degree that they're going to have to do something about it. Um, but anyway, I digress. Such a nerd. Uh, so what are some things you can do? So if you're looking at your testosterone values and they are much higher than what they should be, that could be part of the problem is that elevated testosterone is causing way too much production. But if your testosterone levels are within normal limits or lower than, uh, than what we would expect to be causing something like that, then decreasing your dose and thereby decreasing your testosterone levels mm, may not really do much of anything. Um, it is still kind of an option, but you're going to have to have a severe dose reduction to see if it works. So, you know, if you were just to make the numbers easy, if you took 100 milligrams of testosterone per week, uh, then we would probably have to cut you to 50 milligrams of testosterone a week to make a difference red cell production wise. Not a lot of people are too okay with that, but some people may choose that over the second option depending on how you feel about things. And the second option and most common option taken is blood donation. So everybody knows there's a national blood shortage all the time. It got really, really bad during COVID and it really hasn't gotten much better. Um, so donating blood literally, quite literally, physically fixes the problem pretty snappily. Um, so that's a new word, snappily, snappily. Anyways, so what you're going to be looking for is actually physically pulling the red cells out of your body whenever you're donating blood. So this is good. You have too many of them and they don't have enough. They need some. So you give it to them. It's great. Uh, it's a good trade, free service. You know, um, you can go and sign up either like a, on the website of Red Cross or there's also Vitalant. Um, those are two pretty common nationwide uh, blood donation services and you basically just create an account online, um, fill out a little profile and then sign up for a time to go in. And the very first time you go in, they're going to, you know, go over basic health questions and things like that. Um, they'll do a little finger stick and they'll see what your hemoglobin level is, which kind of correlates also with what your hematocrit would be, but they're usually going to check that beforehand. Uh, and then they'll get you hooked up and going. You usually get like free snacks and drinks and stuff while you're there. You, depending on what time of the year it is, you may get a t-shirt or gift card or something like that too. So they make it a pretty easy process and they're always happy to have new donors and things because like I said, they're always short on blood. Um, so anyway, this is usually the more common uh, choice that people make is to go donate blood. Um, donating blood, depending on the person and everything, it can reduce your hematocrit down different levels. So let's see, you know, if you had a hematocrit of 53 and you go and donate blood, that could reduce your hematocrit anywhere from one to three points there. So if you went in with 53, you could come out and have 52 or, you know, 50 or something like that. Um, just kind of depends on the person. Um, usually it's going to be more toward, you know, 5150, you know, something like that. It's going to reduce it more like two or three points. Um, and so for someone with a hematocrit of 53 that's already up there above the level that we want it to be, we're probably going to tell them to donate more than once before we then recheck their labs and their hematocrit uh, to see where they're at at that point. Uh, in general, you can donate blood about every 8 to 12 weeks. So this isn't like a super fast process if you need to donate more than once, um, but it is faster than if you do dose reduction because if you reduce your dose of testosterone, one of the things you have to wait for is red blood cells to die off. And the lifespan of a red blood cell is approximately 90 to 120 days, sometimes a little less, a little more, whatever, but 90 to 120 days. And so when you reduce your dose of testosterone, then it has to take time to reduce its effect on your red blood cell production. And then you have to wait for all those other, you know, excess red blood cells to die off and then repeat labs later and see if it even worked. So even if we reduce your dose, we'd have to wait three or four months 
to check your labs again to see if it even worked and it may not have. Um, some people it just takes, you know, a little dabble do ya. Uh, and that's all it takes testosterone wise to cause this production issue. Now, how often would you have to donate? It, it really is individual. I have folks who donate once and they haven't ever needed to again. It was like a one-time thing. Testosterone got in, it really, you know, made some production changes to their, their red cell levels and thereafter they've been, they've been fine. Um, then there are people who need to donate maybe once or twice a year. Uh, and then there are those who really they need to go three times a year because they just whatever it is about them They are genetically put together to just pop out some red cells and I'm sure that the Red Cross and Vitalant both love them <laughs> But anyway um, So also be aware that you know being trans is not going to get you turned away from donating blood. They now have new internal policies for this uh, and, and specific screenings and things. You know, they are totally okay with, with trans folks coming and getting blood from them. There's like no issue there. Um, so anyways, so we went over hematocrit, what is it? Thickness of your blood, what values are we looking for? We wanna keep it below about 51 or lower. Um, what can you do? Sometimes you can decrease dose, but that is kind of iffy whether or not that's going to work. Uh, or you can donate blood. Uh, and donating blood is usually the thing that most people go with. And, uh, you know, it gets it out. Boom. Lickety split. So, okay. Hope this was very helpful. And um, go visit those websites, either, you know, Red Cross or Vitalant, uh, if you need to be signing up. Y'all stay safe out there. <laughs>